Pastos Biology. Topics from the study guide. In continuing with covalent bonds, uh, we said a covalent bond results when atoms share electrons. A very important idea is the concept of nonpolar and polar molecules or types of covalent bonds. Let's uh, use a diagram to illustrate that. If we look at figure 2-5 in your study guide, the first diagram is an illustration of a nonpolar molecule. Uh, disregard what the atoms are, but let's assume you have two atoms, each having six protons in their nuclei, bonded with a covalent bond. Now this means each atom is surrounded by six electrons. Now think of these electrons as swarming around the nuclei of the atoms, like bees around a beehive. In fact, an atom is mostly empty space. If the nucleus of an atom is the size of a softball, the nearest electron may be a mile away. Anyway, these electrons are loosely swarming around the two nuclei. Remember, opposite charges attract. So wouldn't this swarm of electrons be more or less evenly distributed around the two nuclei? On the other hand, consider a molecule containing a an atom with a nucleus of, uh, with eight protons in it, and two atoms stuck off to the side, bonded covalently, with one proton each. Now this is a total of 10 protons, so the total electrons this molecule would have would also be 10. Keep in mind that opposites attract. Wouldn't you now have the swarm of electrons congregating around the positive 8 end of the molecule? And you'd have the two protons stuck out in the other direction. Wouldn't this be like a small magnet with a negative end toward the left and a positive end toward the right. We could draw it like this. Here's the magnet, the electrons swarming at one end give that end a negative charge, the protons stuck out at the other end give that end a positive charge. This is a polar molecule. Now the word polar refers to having opposite sides or ends. The Earth is polar. The, uh, a magnet is polar.